What's all this about human meat pies? In 18th century London, there was a barber who had a beautiful wife and was doing very well for himself as a barber. But he and his wife were exposed as being mass murderers and worse. Then, that had profited from the disposal of the bodies by selling them off as human meat pies. We are referring, of course, to none other than Sweeney Todd, the demon barber of Fleet Street. We've all heard of Sweeney Todd, formerly known as Benjamin Barker. It is widely accepted he was actually a fictional London barber. As the story goes, he slit his customers' throats then gave the bodies to his lover to be cooked into pies and sold in her pie shop. The story has been around since the 19th century, first in a penny dreadful publication, then as plays, and more recently as a musical and a film by Tim Burton. It's a grisly, bloody tale. But is the 18th century legend of Sweeney Todd, the demon barber based on some facts? A deeper dive into history reveals some historical grounds for the legend much earlier, in the 15th century, which took place in the streets of Paris. Indeed, a legend of a murderous barber and his cannibal pies has been circulating since medieval times in Paris. Upon deeper inspection, this story seems to have its basis in historical fact. It is in the 15th century, around the year 1430, and we are on the La Dilosset, one of the two islands in the Seine, slap bang in the center of Paris. The action takes place at Rue des Marmousets. This street has since been rebuilt a few times and is now named Rue Chinoines. Rue Chinoines is located in the La Dilosset. Ironically, this is on the site where a police station stands today. At the time, there used to be two neighboring shops, a barber and a pastry chef. It is noteworthy that pastry chefs sold PTS. This term PT has changed over time. In basic context, it refers to a type of meat paste or pie filling, typically encased in pastry. The pastry chef next to the police station was renowned for his small PT which had an incomparable taste. Its recipe is at the origin of a black legend of Paris. During the Middle Ages, the region of the Dilosset was densely populated by students and common folk. It wasn't uncommon for people to vanish without a trace in a bustling city like Paris, where individuals often sought new opportunities or fell victim to the harsh realities of daily life. However, what set these disappearances apart was their correlation with the increasing prosperity of a local pastry chef. One prominent figure, who was a renowned public writer celebrated. For his poignant love letters and altruistic deeds suddenly vanished, alarming the island's inhabitants. In response, a concerned friend embarked on a quest to either locate him or uncover his disappearance. While traversing the La Dilosset in search of clues, he stumbled upon the public writer's dog lingering outside the pastry chef's establishment. Curiosity piqued, the friend ventured inside, purchasing some pies to mull over while seated on a nearby bench. As he savored the pastries, he pondered the enigmatic circumstances surrounding his friend's disappearance, contemplating why someone would forsake everything, including his beloved dog. This mysterious turn of events cast a shadow over the bustling island community, raising questions about the connection between the pastry chef's success and the unsettling rise in missing persons. The loyal dog accompanied the friend daily during his investigation. Every day leading him unfailingly to the same location, the pastry chef's shah. Initially attributing the dog's behavior to the enticing aroma of meat, the friend's perception eventually shifted to a more unsettling scenario that he had met with foul play at the bakery, prompting him to seek assistance from authorities at Chtelet. Despite facing skepticism from the police regarding his suspicions, the friend's persistence eventually secured the presence of an officer to accompany him to the scene. Upon investigation, a hidden hatch linking the two neighboring establishments was uncovered. It was revealed that the barber, known for more than just his grooming services, dispatched his victims to the adjacent shah, where they were repurposed as ingredients for the Tissier's pies. 
As the officer probed further, the cellar beneath the barber's shop unveiled a gruesome tableau. Blood-stained tools of dismemberment strewn amidst the remnants of bones and flesh. Now confronted with this damning evidence, the barber confessed to his atrocities. His victims, predominantly students from Notre Dame, unsuspectingly entered his shop for a shave only to meet their demise by his hand. The bodies were then subjected to macabre butchery downstairs, their flesh minced and prepared for sale. Yet, the motive behind these heinous acts transcended mere sadistic pleasure. It was driven by financial gain. The barber capitalized on the demand for human flesh, supplying his neighbor, the pastry chef, with the grisly ingredients for his infamous pies. Thus, the narrative of depravity unfolded, exposing a tale of exploitation, betrayal, and greed that tainted the quaint streets of Paris with horror. Following the barber's admission of guilt, the pie maker's fate was sealed. Both perpetrators confessed to their crimes upon presentation of evidence, leading to their swift trial and sentencing. Their punishment, commensurate with the gravity of their actions, was merciless. They were incarcerated in iron cages and subjected to a brutal execution by fire at the Place Degreve. Yet, the reckoning did not end there. The scene of their atrocities was razed to the ground, a customary practice of the era. In its place, a solemn stone pyramid stood as a haunting reminder of the horrors perpetrated within. For centuries, the site remained untouched, serving as a grim testament to the barbarity that once unfolded there. This mystery has never been fully established 100% as being true. However, let's consider what information is still available. While historical records are sparse and contemporary documentation lacking, the tale persists in various forms, passed down through oral tradition and literature. While it is unclear whether the events surrounding the barber and baker, and the baking of human pies is entirely factual or embellished over time. Nonetheless, elements of truth underpin the legend, echoing similar narratives of medieval Europe's darker chapters. In the medieval era, barbers were consistently met with skepticism from society. Tasked with wielding sharp implements and occasionally undertaking surgical procedures, Roles typically reserved for trained physicians, they became enshrouded in an aura of suspicion. The close association with blood and the performance of medical tasks deemed forbidden by the church contributed to their depiction as ominous figures in the lore of many European cities. This perception cast them as potentially malevolent actors, fostering a deep-seated distrust that endured through the ages. Do the French actually even eat or like pies? Indeed, the French have shown an appreciation for pies throughout history. While not as integral to their culinary culture as in Britain or Australia, meat pies have found their place in French cuisine. Speculation suggests that pies made from human flesh would likely have resembled a P.T. croat, which would be akin to a pork pie or a friant resembling a sausage roll. Before the revelation of his ghastly secret, the pastry chef enjoyed remarkable success in his trade, with his main ingredient costing him nothing and yielding numerous pies. Parisians developed a taste for his human-filled creations, relishing their unique flavor. Even esteemed figures like King Charles VI were rumored to indulge in these pies, further adding to their popularity and demand. Financial gain emerges as the predominant driving force behind these gruesome acts. Considering the high cost and occasional scarcity of meat, it's plausible that a struggling tissier would explore alternative options for pie fillings. Moreover, the Latin Quarter of Paris presented an ideal hunting ground, abundant with unsuspecting victims in the form of foreign students. These young individuals, far from their families and support networks, provided an easy target for the barber and his accomplice. Their tender flesh, coupled with their transient status, 
made them particularly vulnerable to exploitation. This predatory behavior capitalized on the vulnerability of these students, highlighting the sinister depths to which individuals would sink in pursuit of profit. Achieving absolute certainty regarding the accuracy of these events proves elusive. The precise location of the alleged crimes remains a subject of contention. While a prevalent online claim suggests that the stone block where the barber operated can be found, in the underground garage of the Paris Police's motorcycle division at 18, Rue Chinoines, this assertion conflicts with historical records. This section of Rue Chinoines does not correspond to the site of the ancient Rue des Marmousets, casting doubt on its authenticity. Moreover, the absence of contemporary documentation presents a formidable challenge. The earliest written account, penned by Jacques du Brule in 1612, emerges a staggering 180 years after the purported incidents. Despite du Brule's acknowledgement of widespread rumors, including those surrounding the barber and baker's atrocities, the absence of court records underscores the elusive nature of the truth. As the tale traverses generations, embellishments and alterations inevitably infiltrate its narrative fabric. Elements such as the dog's role in alerting passers-by, the introduction of a German student, and fluctuating victim demographics, from children to adults, underscore the evolution of folklore over time. Notably, in a 19th century rendition, the barber's ethnicity undergoes a sudden transformation to Jewish. While certain aspects may veer into the realm of embellishment, the core premise of a sinister collaboration between a demon barber and his pastry-making accomplice remains plausible. So, how is your appetite for a pie? Bon appetit, if you dare. Thank you for listening. Please join me next time when we will delve into another episode.